How did your dad learn how to run theaters? You say he was a storekeeper, and he was, he must have been a showman from the time he was out of the cradle. Yeah, he, how did he learn to run theaters in this way? Because then he became very successful at it. Well, his main business was always honest dance. That, that's where his heart was first, and I think he came to love all the other things. I think that, you know, the theater, I remember growing up as a kid and people would come and say, Ed, why don't you sell shares to the public? You could have a chain of stores all across the country and we'll build stores for you. And he said, you know, very important for me to be able to support myself and be able to make a living. I, I, I wanted to take care of my family and not be a burden on anyone. But I also don't want to spend my life looking at a bunch of figures in a book. That doesn't sound like any fun. I'm going to travel everywhere and just look at numbers and see how this store is doing better than that. But that, that. So instead, he focused attention by doing something that he really didn't know anything about. He bought this building, uh, and he really had not had much time to go to the theater. It wasn't something that he did before he bought the Royal Alexander. My mother used to go to concerts and did she drag him occasionally. And bef just before, just after they got married. He, he had a job as the fruit buyer for Dominion stores for Leo Weinstein. So you get up at 3 in the morning and you go to the market and you buy the fruit for the f seven stores or eight stores and you work till 6 at night and then it's the summer and it's 105 out and we, they're doing Beethoven's Fifth. But you know they didn't have any money so the best tickets my mother could afford was just behind the timpani. So, uh, so my father's finished work, he comes, and he's sitting down for the concert, and all he can hear are drums. It took him a long time to get him to go back. And, uh, you know, so... So th we're, th we're in the 1930s now? Well, 40s. For they the got 40s, married right? in, 40, they, uh, in 41. And uh, <coughs> I, uh, you know, I, I know that the year before we bought the Royal Alexandra, I, I was a 16-year-old and I was very interested in magic. And so I, there was a show, uh, Kalanag the Great. And there'd only been, the theater was only open 16 weeks that year. But I dragged my father to, to take me to see Kalanag the Great. At the Alex. At the Royal Alex. And it was the model for Robertson Davies for World of Wonders. It's, it's uh, the mental, uh, the telepathist in, in, in uh, and his magic words were Sim Salabim. And with those magic words, he took the, the cover off the Volkswagen, and 17 beautiful young women came out of the Volkswagen, which was one more person than there were in the audience that <laughs> night. I don't know why we needed a spare. And, you know, so, uh, so that was his experience of theater before he bought the building. And when we bought the Old Vic in London, England, I went over, I was the first person in the family to go over and see it. And Olivier had painted the entire building, the inside of the auditorium, black. black. And he had built the stage out. And it was quite dilapidated. And the head of the Board of Governors said, Mr. Mervish, I, I hope you're not very disappointed in what you're looking at. And I said, well, actually, this is exactly what I expected, because if it was in better condition, you wouldn't be selling it. So this is fine. We're, we'll, we'll do something with it. And uh, Olivier was interviewed for Omnibus. They did a program on Dad, and they, and uh, uh, he said, "This is the theater I destroyed," which, of course, was ironic because it was the theater he had saved by painting it black. He had kept this theater alive for 17 years, doing shows that no one else had ever been able to do, and uh, and and kept a, a great tradition alive, and gave us a chance to restore it, and we had it for 15 or 17 years and uh, and we were able to have wonderful experiences there and turn it back to a not-for-profit foundation that since uses it and what we didn't know is it came with another building it came with the annex which the was young as Vic, big right? well no the young Vic was down the street but there was the annex was a place where they built all the sets across the street and that's where their box office had had been in those years we moved the box office back into our theater and for a peppercorn a year, we rented the annex to uh, the National Theatre. And they used it to create new writing. And out of that came some of the things that went into the Olivier. 
a peppercorn so a year? It was the lowest coin of the realm. A peppercorn? Peppercorn. I've never heard of it. Yes. So, uh, so it was a pound, a shilling, a pence, and a peppercorn? An actual piece of, you know, a little peppercorn. You went into the jar, you had the peppercorn. Really? And someone walked across <laughs> from the old Vic and went, there well, it is for this I, year. I like to think it, but not, not actually. The th it was on the writing that it was a peppercorn, and that was it. I want to go back to the Alex for a bit. Yes. Um, and, and your dad. Did he read it in the newspaper that was being sold? How did, did he walk by the building? How did that happen? I'm not sure how he knew. Uh, you know, the, the lawyer who dealt with it at the time was Bert Stitt, and he was a young apprentice to, and I know that, that my father's accountant brought it, brought it to his attention, and I have a feeling my father had actually been looking at theaters earlier. Uh, my father loved uh, vaudeville, and, and there was the old Victory Theater at Dundas and, uh, uh, and, and uh, Spadina, and, uh, which had been the Yiddish theater at one time. And I remember as a kid being taken to a vaudeville theater across from City Hall, the Shays, right. where I'd seen, a, 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 I think I'd seen uh, Houdini actually do an escape act with a, being inversed in a, in a water container. That's where the hotel from. is right now, isn't it? Yes, where right the Sheridan the is. Right across City Hall is where the That's hotel, right. That's, that's where, where the theater was. was. And so uh, uh, I think my father had, had gone to look at the victory. And I have a letter somewhere from some New York consultant saying, uh, you know, the stage house isn't big enough, Ed. They have a fly back there, but it's really not deep enough. It was built for vaudeville. So it really wouldn't be suitable for your use. Now, when he bought the Royal, it was still a hemp house. The Royal? The Royal Alexandra was, oh, a, was, a, was a hemp house. You mean it the had fly to, gallery run? Yes, we ropes, all pulled yeah. ropes and hide sandbags and, yeah. you know, and, and, and so one of the things that he did in the, after about 10 years is he converted it to counterweights, uh, which made much more sense in the modern world. Now counterweights sometimes are electronically controlled by computers, uh, even for some portions of shows 